Okay, so today I'm doing my SAS list update, doing all the updates with regards to my SAS list. I was meant to do a bookshelf tour today. I'm sorry, the bookshelf tour just hasn't happened yet. I haven't had a moment to do it. I've been very busy. Uh, it will come along as soon as I'm able to do it. It's just the bookshelf tour takes a good three hours to do. Focusing, therefore, on the SAS list update. So for those of you who don't know, a SAS list is a, 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 a SAS is an acronym for or serious about series. You create a list of series that you either want to start, continue on with, or finish, and you do what you can to accomplish that on your list. So today we're going to update that. I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Elizabeth from the booktube channel Lizzie Faye Loves Books who came up with the SAS list. I love having a SAS list. I think this is my second or third year. I think it's third year. My third year doing a SAS list and I absolutely love it. I think it's a great way to stay on track. If you are finding that you are reading too many standalones or that you're starting series but for whatever reason you're not finishing them, one uh, very likely reason being you just forgot about the series because there's so many books that you're reading, write up a SAS list. Keep yourself on track. So I have a number of series on my SAS list. Some of those series are now complete and some of them I am currently progressing with. So we're going to talk about the complete stuff first and then move forward. Let's begin. Don't you just love moments where you think you've completed a series and then suddenly you find out the author's decided to publish another book in that series and so you're not exactly complete or up to date, but you might as well be because it's only one book. Well, welcome to the All for the Game trilogy. I have finished The Foxhole Court, The Raven King, and The King's Men. All by Nora Sakovich. These are male, male, uh, oh, well, not really, actually. It's tough to say. In book one, I wouldn't call it male, male. I'd call it more of a, uh, I don't even know, YA sporting contemporary, YA new adult sporting contemporary. There are some MN themes that come up in book two, and there are a lot of MM themes that come up in book three. I like the series as a whole. I, as I say, I've not read book four. It only just came out recently, and uh, I don't know. If you've read it, let me know what you think. But all in all, I do think it is a good series. I struggled when I read The Foxhole Court the first time. I read it, I think, two years ago when DNF'd, because I was, there was just a lot going on, not only in the book, but for me too, and I felt like I was in my life, and I felt like I was missing too much from the book. So it was good to give it a second chance, because I got through the series. Bah one book, clearly. <laughs> but um, yeah, pretty satisfied. I'd recommend giving it a go. Start with the first one, see what you think, but this series is deemed complete by me. The next series I completed is way too complicated. It's in my shelf, but I just cannot get it out. So I'm just going to have it be put up on the screen. I'm talking about the Love and Gelato series by Jenna Evans Welch. Book number one, Love and Gelato. Book number two, Love and Luck. And book number three, Love and Olives. And yeah, and that's it. Yay. Okay. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this series. I think I gave all of them five stars. I did. Yeah. So it's a YA contemporary series where we follow a different character and different location within each book, but the basic setup for each book is the same. So it's more like they're from the same universe than series. We follow a young adult aged woman who travels overseas to see her father for one reason or another, who is no longer there with her in her everyday life. And so things obviously happen along the way. I gave every book five stars. I highly recommend the series. If you're looking for more contemporary stuff, I think this is great. There are hard-hitting moments in all of the books, so keep in mind that they are slightly hard-hitting. You know, there's the easy-to-read contemporaries, which are like a 1 out of 10 as far as a hard contemporary is concerned, hard-hitting, that is. Then you have your standard hard-hitting, which is like 5 to 6 out of 10. Then you've got your really, really hard-hitting, like 9 or 10 out of 10. This is more like a 6 or 7 out of 10 hard-hitting contemporary within each book of the series, but I did love it, so recommend it if that's something that sounds good to you. The next series I finished was The Captive Prince. I've got this the wrong way round. How frustrating. Captive Prince uh, trilogy. So we have Prince's Gambit and uh, Captive... No. That's number one. Captive Prince. 
Prince's Gambit, and then King's Rising, all by C.S. Picard. Yeah, great series. I do highly recommend um, uh, in as far as it's very different for the genre that it is. I think I would give, call the age rating adult. The genre is fantasy, but it is a fantasy because it is set in a world that is not our own, a world that is made up by the author C.S. Picard. Don't go into this series for a magic system. If you do, you will be heavily disappointed. But there is a male, male, um, male, male storyline that goes on within the trilogy. And it's really interesting seeing how this goes from where it was at the beginning to where it is at the end. Very, very, very interesting. And they also have reasons as to why, um, the male male situation is the male male situation and it's that was really really fascinating for me i won't give it away i'll let you read it yourself but they actually give a reason as to why things are the way they are in certain situations and it's like oh yeah that actually makes sense so give that one a go the next series I completed was the Piper and Porter duology, Frozen Detective and Dead End Detective, both by my favourite female author, not only of cozies, but all time, Amanda Flower. So this is a two-book duology, and the only disappointing thing about this duology is the fact that it is only two books, and there is no plan for Amanda Flower to go back and continue on with the series. As you can see, there's a little logo there. It's the Hallmark logo. And apparently Hallmark are publishing, which is the full thing, Hallmark. Mark Publishing, uh, went out of business, and because they did, obviously there are no more books being published under Hallmark Publishing, and so this series is done. But it was a really, really wonderful duology. I really enjoyed it. We follow, what was her name again? I'm so sorry, I'm just going to find out. Darby. Darby Piper. We follow Darby Piper in both books. I don't remember which one's book one. I think actually that one may be book one. Anyway, either way, we follow Darby Piper in both books, who just so happens to be a private eye. This is the first time I've followed a private eye in a cozy mystery series, because generally speaking, in cozies, you follow a uh, amateur sleuth. But that really worked for me, because the focus was very much more centred around the mystery than the cozy side, because you knew that this person lived, eat, drank, breathed, being a private eye, where in standard cozies you ha you're following them at their job as well. So her job being the private eye that she is, you follow her to her office while she's working on cases and whatever, whatever. Where with other cozies you follow someone to their bakery and watch them bake something. But then uh, after hours, like when they're not working, that's when they're solving the crime. Where this is more, you know, uh, full on, more, more just uh, revolving around the mystery than a cozy side of things, but I really, really loved it. I gave both, both books five stars, and I highly recommend them if you want to catch up on your Amanda Flower reads. It's a good one to read. Speaking of Amanda Flower, the next series we are going to talk about is, once again, not in order, the Farm 2 uh, Table series by... Amanda Flower, and a book just fell out of my bookshelf. We will keep going. I'm sure you probably saw that happen up there, and I didn't. <laughs> uh, the Farm to Table uh, series by Amanda Flower. I have read book one, Farm to Trouble, book two, woo. book two, Put Out to Pasture, and book three, In Farm's Way. And I'm um, denied whether I should read uh, Crime and Cherry Pits, which is book number four, and I believe that only came out very late last year, or very early this year, or recently, or something. Anyway, it came out at some point that I wasn't expecting, and I um denied for a while, do I read uh, book four prior to counting this up to date for me, and decided not to in the end. There were too many headaches revolving around the audiobook, which is still not available. I've been waiting a long time for Crime and Cherry Pits uh, to come out on audiobook, so I just decided that completing the three would be in enough. I do recommend the trilogy for what it is. This was a tough start for me. I went into it mainly because it's an Amanda Flower series. I'm not a fan of farm to table stuff. It's not saying that I disagree with farm to table. It's just not something that intrigues me. So it, that side didn't work for me. But by the time we got to the end, I was really intrigued to see what would happen in book two. I really liked book two. I loved book three. Yeah. So I highly recommend again. Now we move on to the VRC series. I knew that I would drop them. They, uh, there's, it's, yeah, there's a lot to hold here. <laughs> the VRC series are by, um, gosh, I forgot the name, Alice Winters. This is an, uh, adult male, male, 
really tough to say. Adult male male paranormal, what I call, but no one else does, cozy mystery series in that there are spice scenes in this series that are like 10 out of 10 spice, so do be warned of that. And in some books, there are none. In some books, it's 10 out of 10. In some books, it's like 5 out of 10. But the spice is there, and I think that that's what would automatically not make it a cozy mystery series. But outside of that, I figure it's very much like a cozy mystery series. We are following people who are working for the vampire-related crimes unit. There is only one human, this guy, uh, whose name is Finn. He works with the vampire uh, team in their unit to try and solve vampire-related crimes, and there are other things that happen along the way. There are five books. I gave all of the five books five stars. In uh, the first and the last book, in the first and the last book, <laughs> we follow Finn and Marcus, Finn's love interest, and then in books two, three, and four, we follow a different um, vampire officer from the VRC and a relationship that they are getting into. But yeah, really, really love this series. I do not hear about Alice Winters getting recommended anywhere, and if you do love your cozies and you don't mind a bit of spice here and there, or you're happy to skip over a spicy scene, which I've done in the past, not with this series, but I have done in the past, just kind of skip through, <laughs> um, then I highly recommend this series. You know, definitely it is an, a hidden gem of a series. So we have How to Vex a Vampire, How to Elude a Vampire, How to Lure a Hunter, how to save a human, and how to defy a vampire. And big shout out to this one. Every time I see the title, it reminds me how to lure a hunter. In this one, we follow Alexei, and oh my gosh, his humor, he is so dry witted with his humor that I laughed so much reading that book. But anyway, highly recommend this series. And my final completed series, again, is a situation where there's another book coming out. It's not out yet, and I've decided, okay, I'm up to date, I'm good. When the next book comes out, I'll read it, I'm fine. <laughs> and uh, that is the London Calling duology. So book one is boyfriend material. It is very, very popular, unlike the Alice Winter series this book is, because it was turned into a media visual or watching, I think it was like a TV series or something that it became, anyway, it became quite popular. And this is the sequel, which is Husband Material. Uh, it's the first book I read this month to close out this series. Father Material should be coming out soon, and I am looking forward to that. Very quick stats for you. I believe this is adult or YA, um, male, male again. Um, yeah, really enjoying my LGBTIQ plus reads this year, but going to broaden my horizons because I'm realizing I'm reading a lot of male, male uh, LGBTIQ plus books. However, I would like to read a lot of different ones like, you know, trans and lesbian and whatever else, whatever else, whatever else. Uh, but yeah, really, really enjoyed this. I loved uh, Boyfriend Material so much. I laughed so much through this book. The humor is fantastic. I love Luke, who is one of the main characters. Then going into this one, I laughed even more, if possible. I felt that this book was even better than this one, which already got five stars from me. Can you hear what I'm saying? I highly recommend. <laughs> Gotta read this series. There are series that I do not highly recommend, but this one and the Alice Winters one, I absolutely do. Okay, so those are all the series on my SAS list that I am either up to date with or have completed. Now let's talk about series that I have not gotten up to date with or have not completed. And first of all, we're going to talk about the True Colors series. There are two books out, uh, Conventionally Yours, we'll put on this side, and Out of Character. Character? Yes, we'll put on this side. This book I've already read, but I will be rereading next month, and then the following month I'll read this one to make it a completed duology. I loved Conventionally yours when I first read it. I don't remember when I read it. It wasn't that long ago, though. But I absolutely loved uh, the way that uh, Annabeth Albert... Uh, what was that character's name? I, I remember stories. Characters sometimes. Sometimes they're hard to remember. I still remember Kelsia from Mistborn, and I first read that in 2020. But, you know, um, what was his name? Let's have a look. Um, perfection, but... Uh, it is... Alden. Oh, there you go. Okay, so Alden is very, um...
Oh, hang on. I don't know which one it was. It was either Onred or uh, Conrad or Alden, one of them. One of the guys is a jock football player. The other one is the one I'm focusing on. But anyway, whoever that is, I'm taking up too much time as it is. Uh, he is very introverted. He suffers from anxiety to the umpteenth degree. Annabeth Albert either suffers from anxiety herself or she has researched this very well because it was very true to people who suffer from very high anxiety. And I really appreciate that. I am someone who does. So, you know... It, it hit her personally as well for me too. But I just really loved the book so much. There are some LGBTIQ plus male male authors that I've read where I think I get that it's, it's male male, but I just I don't like what you're doing with this. But with Annabeth Albert, even though it's the only book I read of hers, Conventionally Yours really stood out to me as just so well researched on the anxiety side. The plot was amazing. The character growth, so wonderful. So yes, next month I will read Conventionally Yours, and the month after I will read Out of Character to have this duology complete. Speaking of duologies, there is a duology I cannot wait to start. And I don't have these books on me, so again, we're going to have to put them up on the screen. It is the Golden Boys series. Book number one is called Golden Boys, <laughs> and book number two is called Afterglow, and they are both by Phil Stamper, arguably, arguably, my favourite male male, male author of all time. It is very tough, though. I mean, I love Phil Stamper. I love um, Adam Silvera. And there was another one that I can't remember. Anyway, that's okay. We'll move right along. But, um, oh my gosh, I love Phil Stamper. The fact that Phil Stamper has a duology that I haven't read and all the books of his I have read were standalones. I am ready to sink my teeth into a series that Phil Stamper has written. And if he'd like to release a third book, then please, by all means. Obviously, I don't know how I'm going to go with it. I don't know what the premise is. Phil Stamper is an auto by author for me, but I'm very excited because it is Phil Stamper. So I haven't read any of these books yet, but I do plan on reading them soon. And I just double-checked, I'm reading them in October and November. So it's still a little bit of a wait for me, but, you know, good things come to those who wait, right? <laughs> All right, let's talk about Amish Matchmaker by Amanda Flower. We've got book one, Matchmaking Can Be Murder. Book two, Courting Can Be Killer. Book three is Marriage Can Be Mischief. These are a cozy mystery series. I need to put the books down because there are two more books that have come out and they're, they're what we're going to put on the screen. So we have Honeymoons Can Be Hazardous and we have Dating Can Be Deadly. Okay, I'm not a massive fan of this series, but it's an Amanda Flower series and so I want to keep trying. It's been an interesting time of rating for me. I gave book one, uh, Matchmaking Can Be Murder, three stars. Book two, Courting Can Be Killer, four stars. And book three, Marriage Can Be Mischief, three stars. Interestingly, I'm not a biggest fan of the main character, but her best friend, um, Lois, so I think her name's Millie. Am I right? Yes, Millie Fisher. Don't necessarily love the series, but I remember the character. I'm not necessarily a big fan of Millie, but I am a big fan of Lois. She definitely drives the story forward. I love that we are dealing with goats in this book because Amanda Flower always has an animal somewhere, um, which I love. But um, yeah, I just don't like leaving series unfinished, especially series by Amanda Flower. So while it's not my favorite series, I am going to continue on with it. And as with uh, the uh, Golden Boys, I'm going to be reading both of those books in October and November to catch up with that series. Now I have a collection of books that I'm calling a series that I don't have on me as yet. However, they are all on the way. And when I read them, when, when they're available, I will read them. This is what I'm calling my new releases series section where I'm up to date on a series, but I can't wait. I'm so eagerly anticipating the next book that I've got it on its own SAS list under the new releases series section. <laughs> so the first of those books, and I'm just looking up here because this is where my hard copy of my uh, SAS list is. The first copy of the uh, first option of those is the um, Amish Candy Shop uh, next book, which is a gingerbread something or other. It is coming out, and that's by Amanda Flower. It's coming out in October. Then we have the Secrets and Scrabbles, which 
which I think is called Curse at the Captain's Point or something like that by Josh Lanyon. And Josh Lanyon has not only announced that the ebook is out and the physical book is out, but the audiobook, Matt Hayes, we love you. He's the audiobook narrator. Matt Hayes is already on the audiobook and it's not too far away at all. Very excited to get back to, um, whatever that series was called that I'm trying to remember. Secrets and Scrabbles. I love Secrets and Scrabbles. And Josh Lanyon even said that she's going to start Josh Lanyon being a male pen name is a male pen name for a female author. Josh Lanyon um, went on record as saying she was going to take some time away from Secrets and Scrabbles and do other things. So I was so pleasantly thrilled when I found out ebook is out, physical book is out, audiobooks on the way. Let's do this, Josh Lanyon. I'm so very excited. And the third one being the Poppy McAllister book, um, which is coming out, when's that one? Late September. And that one also is gingerbread, just like the um, um, candy shop. We've got Amanda Flowers candy shop, gingerbread something, and we have the Hayley Powell food and cocktail gingerbread something coming out later on this year. So don't have those books on me as yet, but as soon as all of those are available and ready to go, or even one of them, then of course I will be reading them. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, Ravaged World. Oh my gosh. So there are three books in the Ravaged World uh, trilogy. These books are horrors, and they are by Ian Rob Wright. I've read a lot of Ian Rob Wright's standalone horrors that I love, and so I wanted to read one of his series, which I, I have actually done. I've read one of his series. I was just thinking I haven't read one, but I have. I've read one. <laughs> the one that includes The Housemaids. I forgot what it's called. Uh, anyway, so the interesting thing about this is I also want to listen to this series on audio, audio book. Book one is available, which is seasick is available. Book two, which I have, yep, Ravage, is not available on audiobook. And book three, which I don't have yet, which is Savage, is available on audiobook. Now, while I could just jump right in and read this one and wait, I don't want to wait. I'd rather, um, I don't want to have to read a book and then wait. I'd rather wait first. And then when all three books are available on audiobook, I can read all of them at once in the one month. So, Technically, all of the books in this series should have been done by now, but they're not done because of the audiobook wait, which is fine. Which is fine. We will deal with it. <laughs> Next up is the Hayley Powell Food and Cocktail Mystery Series by um, Lee and Hollis. Interestingly, I have uh, the latest book, book number, where are we? <laughs> book number 17, in a Hayley Powell food and cocktail mystery series list on my SAS list, and under the new releases list on my SAS list. So I don't know why it's listed twice, but anyway, so we can just skip past that and move on to the next one. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Immortals series by Alison Noel. Book number one is Evermore. Book number two is Blue Moon. Oh, ho, ho, and look at this if I reach to my left. Book number three, which has a bookmark in it, <laughs> is Shadowland. And I'm currently reading this one. <laughs> I am literally a day away uh, from finishing that. I will have that finished tomorrow. There are... I should have been telling you all along how many books are in this series. But anyway, there are six books in this particular series, and Shadowland is book three. So I will be halfway uh, through when I finish Shadowland. I loved book one. It was absolutely fantastic. Everything I could want and more. We follow a... A uh, teen by the name of Eva, who is um, psychic and more than that. So she is a psychic and more. She doesn't want to be. She hates this. She wants to be left alone. <laughs> and that's what made me love it even more. I love my fantasies, but that was just such a different sort of trope. I am, well, aside from Harry Potter, letting Harry Potter go. I am this, but I don't want to be the key. <laughs> We're thinking of South Park with, um, with Butters and Morpheus. You are butters the key. Oh, do I have to be? I don't want to be the key. <laughs> but anyway, so that was um, ever in this fight. And then, yeah, on to book two. Interesting things happened, but the way it concluded had me very concerned. However, book three is not um, making me any more concerned. My fears are allayed with book three because what I was concerned about seems to have been just put on the back burner. It's a dress, don't get me wrong, but it's more like, okay, we're going to move on to something else, and then little by little we'll just come back to this, but it won't overshadow the book. And I really, really appreciate that, because normally, I don't know about you all, normally I want to deal with things the moment they come up. If you're giving me a cliffhanger in book two, you must deal with it in book three, pick but right back up where we left off. But in this case, I'm very happy for the break. Very happy. Anyway, so there you go. There's that one.
Okay, so next up we are going to talk, what is this series called? I'm so sorry. We're going to talk about the Housemate series by Jay Northcott. I have three books here. So I've read book one, Helping Hand, book two, Like a Lover, and book three, Practice Makes Perfect. And I'm pretty sure I've actually read book four. Yes, I have. It was on my completed uh, TBR shelf uh, this month. I completed uh, Watching and Wanting. This is, I think, a six-book series. I'm just going to confirm that. Yes, this is a six-book series. There are four that are done. This one is just done this month, but there are four now that are done, so I only have two to go. It is a male-male series where we are following these um, teen, I think late teen, early 20s uh, boys who are boarding at a house in university in England, and we follow a different housemate. It's called the Housemate Series for a reason, a different housemate in each book who finds a lover and things happen. Spice level incredibly high. Majority of each book is the spice and not the prose. The main focus is the spice in this series. But in saying that, the books are getting longer as they go along. The first book, Helping Hand, is literally very short, but you can already see the difference there. Much thicker. And as they go along, they just get thicker and thicker. This one a little thinner, I think, than that one. But yeah, and that's because Jay Northcott did decide to place prose in between those scenes so that he could have wonderful character arc and character arcs and growth and things that occur throughout each book, which does make it feel a lot more well-rounded to me. I love, love, love this series. I gave book one five stars, book two five stars. Uh, I don't know what I gave book three. I gave book three by five stars, and I gave book four, I think it was either four or 4.5. Uh, I'll have a check. I don't even know why I didn't give it five stars. I'm just trying to remember. But anyway, I gave this, uh, yes, 4.5 stars. Um, it just dragged a little at the end. Okay, yeah, it dragged a little at the end. Too much to be noticeable for me not to deduct 0.5 stars for this one. But the, but until we got to the point of it dragging, it was really good. So yeah, I recommend this series very highly if you can deal with the spice level. A lot of fun, short books, but just wonderfully written. Well done, Jane Northcott. Next up, Zodiac Academy. I've done very well with this series. Uh, so we have a uh, 0.5 Origins of an Academy Bully. Uh, book number one, The Awakening. Book number two, The Awakening is Told by the Boys. Sorry, book number one, A, The Awakening is Told by the Boys. Book number two, Ruthless Fay. Book number three, The Reckoning. Book number four, Shadow Princess. Book number five, uh, which is Accursed Fates. Book number 5.5? Yep, 5.5. Uh, the big A.S. Party. I'm so sorry about the glare, by the way. So much fun having glare. Uh, um, book six, Fated Throne. And book seven, Heartless Sky. Okay. I love this series. Did not read um, Zodiac Academy this month, and boy, do uh, is it noticeable that I didn't read it. It'll be the first book that I read in uh, the next book, book eight, I think it is, will be the very first book that I read in August, and I am overdue for a um, Zodiac Academy read. I love this series. You all know how much I love this series. I talk about it so much. If you ever need me to do a dedicated review on series, Ask me to, we'll have more time for me to discuss it, but you all know, if you've been here for a while, how much I am obsessed with Zodiac Academy, and I missed not reading it this month. I think all of the books got five stars. If they didn't, it would have been like a four and no lower. Um, yeah, just absolutely love all of them. They're adult fantasy. They're, if you think of like an adult version of Harry Potter, and there are spicy scenes included because it's adult, <laughs> and you love that idea, pick up Zodiac Academy. Seriously, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's a fantastic series. I recently resurrected a series that I DNF'd, which is the Coffee House Mystery series. Too many books and not enough time to go through, but I just want to make a quick point of it. I have nine books to go after this one, and I'm reading the first of those nine next month. So, yeah, mentioning that too. 
Famous Five series. I have read the first eight. There are 21 in the series, so I've got 12 to go. I am reading two this month, and I think staying next month, I start reading three a month because there's so many you know, that I need to catch up. But really enjoying my time with Famous Five. If you ever wanted a cozy mystery middle grade, even though it's not that, but I'm calling it that, try The Famous Five. Every single book uh, has revolves around the, the children trying to solve a mystery. It is so much fun and so adorable. I highly recommend. Next up, Campers and Criminals. This is the latest book I've read, book number 22, Jackets, Jacko Lanterns, and Justice. Uh, at the moment, there are 20, no, there are not, there are 36 books in the series, so I think it's like 14, or so 12 or 14, my maths isn't that great right now, but I still need to get through, but I will be up to date by the end of the year, and I, I am liking it overall. And last but not least is the Millie Cruise Ship series. This is book number uh, four, Deadly Deception. There are, I don't even know how many there are in this series. I think there's 21. I do not plan on getting through this series by the end of the year, though. This actually came into a place coffee house. So it's there. I do still plan to read more Millie Cruise Ship because I do love the series, but I don't plan on having it completed by the end of the year. And that is it, my updated SAS list in a nutshell. So, pretty good. We've got nine uh, series that are complete, or that I've deemed to be complete. Uh, there are two that I didn't show you, which were DNF'd series, so please forgive me for that. They included the Renegade series and the Red Queen series, because I DNF'd them, and because I said that if I DNF a series, I'm going to count it as concluded, and I, I arranged that rule for myself at the start of the year, then, uh, yeah, I consider them completed. But then we also have the 13 series that are not completed yet, and I am looking forward to either starting, continuing on, or completing those. How are you doing with your SAS list? Let me know in the comments below. But in the meantime, this is where I am going to leave it, letting you all go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. Please do be kind and love one another, and spread your sparkling energy all throughout the world. And until next time, happy reading! Bye, everyone!